turn with me in your Bibles, please, to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, reading from verse 13. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, reading from verse 13. We're going to read a long passage of Scripture. It contains a very interesting account of one of the post-resurrection appearances of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 13, let's follow together in our Bibles, and we're reading from the New International Version. Perhaps we can read together, those who have that version, let's read out loud together. Luke 24, verse 13 and following. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked among, along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all that took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And they approached the village to which they were going. Jesus acted as if he was going further, but they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke bread. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Now this is one of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. And those of us who have studied the resurrection from a historical point of view will know that the resurrection of Jesus is one of the best supported historical facts. There are many things that support the fact of the resurrection. The eyewitness testimonies, the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, the fact that the tomb was empty, the origin of the early church, and that's an important one because the origin of the early church cannot be explained any other way than by taking into account the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
how is it that this band of discouraged and disillusioned disciples of Jesus all of a sudden became a force to be reckoned with by the Roman Empire and eventually they spread the gospel throughout the then known world and conquered the Roman Empire as it were how is it how can you explain this apart from the resurrection of Jesus Christ how is it that each of them almost all of the 12 original disciples died a martyr's death died as martyrs for the cause not one of them denied that Jesus rose from the dead under persecution and pressure if it was a hoax if it was something that was contrived by them you would expect that at least one would have given out the secret but not one of them confessed to anything other than the fact that Jesus is risen from the dead the resurrection is a very well supported fact of history the situation in our text is interesting because here you see two disciples leaving Jerusalem and they are very downhearted and discouraged despite the fact that Jesus had already risen from the dead at that time they heard the report of the woman that the tomb was empty and it seemed that something urgent took place for them to have to leave Jerusalem at that crucial point leave the other disciples and to make their way seven miles away to a, a little village called Emmaus why did they have to move we are we're not told by the scripture but leaving at that crucial point was something that must have been very difficult for them because imagine you hear these reports you want to get back among your brethren and to discuss the implications of this event but as they walked along the road they spoke about the events that they knew of happening in Jerusalem and that was the crucifixion of Jesus they queried this whole matter of the empty tomb and they wondered what could it mean they were downcast discouraged disappointed even disillusioned you see they had wrong expectations they had expected that Jesus would re reveal his great power and destroy the Roman armies and take over control of Palestine just before the crucifixion they thought that when Jesus was arrested that this was the catalytic point the thing that would really trigger the overthrow of Rome and the revealing of who Jesus really was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and to their shock and disbelief to their horror they saw Jesus being crucified on the cross instead and so they, they, they were disoriented they couldn't understand what was happening and then this story of the empty tomb really confused them further and they walked along discouraged then Jesus came up beside them but they were kept from recognizing him how many of you know that sometimes at the lowest point in your life when you are most discouraged Jesus comes right there to stand with you but sometimes you can't recognize who is with you but it's Jesus himself and you know Jesus approached them and asked them what they were speaking about now whenever God asks a question you know that he asks a question to show you where you are at it's not because he doesn't know and he requires an answer because he is the answer amen so when the answer asks you a question you better look into yourself because the question is not for him it's for you amen when God asks a question it's a very significant thing God said Jesus said to them what are you discussing so they said you must be a stranger to these parts you must be the only visitor to Jerusalem who hasn't heard the events of the the last couple of days and you haven't heard what has happened you know and they told him about Jesus of Nazareth and they said this man was a prophet mighty in deed and in word and it says the, 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 the chief priests and the rulers put him to death they crucified him and they said we had hoped that this man would have been the deliverer look at verse 21 they said but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel we had hoped 
And you know, sometimes when you have wrong expectations, you're going to be very disappointed. And you're going to feel that you have lost all hope. Their expectation was that Jesus was going to be a political messiah to de deliver them through military means and take control and redeem Israel from the oppression of the Romans. They didn't understand that Jesus' mission was much more than that. The wrong expectations caused them to have this disillusionment when what they expected didn't come about. And I'm going to ask you to think in your own life of times when you have been really disappointed because you expected something maybe from someone and they disappointed you. Or you expected something from God and God operated and worked in a different way and you are disappointed. You know, you ask God for something, a particular thing, and God gives you something else. Something else that you didn't really want. But he knows that you need it. Or maybe you were sick and you expected God to heal you by such and such a time. And you drew the line in the sun and you said, Lord, if you don't heal me by such and such a time, then boy, I will have to reconsider my faith. And I have to reconsider whether or not I am supposed to serve you. How many people have ever had that experience? Now you don't have to, to say yes. But I remember years ago, a dear sister of mine who came to me and said she was sick and she had confessed all scriptures and she had believed the word and she said i am holding god to his word that if he doesn't heal me in the next two weeks i'm going to backslide and i'm not going to serve him again now when you get yourself into those kinds of wrong ideas thinking that god exists to serve you then you are going to be disillusioned because god is not going to show up all the time when you want him but he will always be on time. Amen? So we have to understand how God operates. Sometimes it seems that he is not operating in our lives when in fact he's working more than ever. And we need to understand that. And here it is, they were disillusioned thinking that, you know, Jesus had not lived up to their expectations. Jesus had not fulfilled their dreams. They were very disillusioned and they were going in the wrong direction away from jerusalem without hope depressed and they had the wrong focus they were focused on jesus being a military and political messiah rather than the savior of the world to deliver us from sin they saw jesus in the wrong way they had a perception of jesus as a prophet but how many of you know that jesus is much more than a prophet amen he's much more than a prophet he is that but much more He's a prophet plus. He speaks the word of God. But he is the word of God as well. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus Christ is the word of God. Amen. The Bible says in time past God spoke to our fathers through the prophets but in these last days he has spoken to us in his son so jesus christ is much more so they, they, they had a very incomplete and insufficient revelation and perception of who jesus really is they thought that the empty tomb was a symbol of hopelessness without realizing that the empty tomb meant hope and deliverance they thought that it was time to reassess their faith and reevaluate what they really believed. Not realizing that God was coming to them now to give them deep faith, true faith in the ultimate purpose of God. Jesus was standing there with them. They stopped along the path and they began to explain to Jesus. Jesus said, what things? As if he didn't know. And as they explained, Jesus had to rebuke them. And I'm so glad that Jesus rebuked those he loves. How many of you have ever had the rebuke of Jesus? Sometimes we talk a lot of foolishness, you know. And Jesus has to come beside us and say, look, you're talking foolishness. He has to rebuke us. But his rebuke was a gentle rebuke. 
but a firm rebuke at the same time. It was tough, but it was tender. And that's the hottest type of rebuke, you know. When somebody who loves you tell you the truth, it's hot, but you know that it's out of the love that they had for you. How many of you are glad that Jesus rebukes us? He does not allow us to just go along in the error of our ways without correcting us. In Revelation, he says, Those whom I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So I'm very glad for his rebuke. Jesus rebuked them and said, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So they had this failure to understand prophecy and the scriptures. And Jesus, it says, beginning with Moses and the prophets, explained to them about himself in all the scriptures. Now just think about it. You're walking along this road in the afternoon. And Jesus is walking beside you. You don't even know it's Jesus, but he's giving you a personal Bible study from Genesis to Revelation. Can you imagine being a part of that Bible study? Wouldn't you like to have been there to hear Jesus expound scripture? To hear Jesus expound the word? And sometimes when we come to church, we don't realize that it is Jesus speaking to us. Expounding scripture. Explaining to us from the scriptures about himself. Amen? How many of you would like to have a revelation of Jesus Christ this morning? Through the scriptures. To understand who Jesus really is. You see, it's not enough to understand that Jesus is risen from the dead. It's not enough to know that the tomb was empty. You have to have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And a personal revelation of Jesus Christ for yourself. Amen? Amen. Not through somebody else and somebody else's experience, but your personal experience. You have to encounter the risen Christ for yourself. Knowing the facts of the resurrection will not save you by itself. You have to know and then you have to act and then you have to encounter Jesus Christ in your own experience. So, Jesus took them through the scriptures. Can you imagine this Bible study? What do you think he said to them? I can just imagine Jesus starting with Genesis and saying that, you know, in the scriptures, in Genesis chapter 3, when man fell into sin... And the whole world was condemned. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Lord gave the promise that I would come and bring deliverance. In Genesis 3.15, it says, And I will put enmity, God says, between you and the woman, between the offspring of the serpent and the offspring of the woman. And it says that he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And Jesus was saying, you remember that scripture? And they said, yes, we know that scripture. We heard it in Sunday school. We heard it in synagogue meetings. We heard it growing up at our bar mitzvah. It was quoted. But we did not understand that it referred to Jesus Christ. That he would come as the seed of the woman. And that he would crush the serpent's head. And that in the process he would be bruised. And he would suffer. He would suffer hardship. He would suffer persecution. He would die for us. But he would crush the head of the serpent. Aren't you glad, brethren, about Jesus crushing Satan's head? Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus crushed the devil's head. You see, they didn't understand that the Messiah would have some work to do that would involve a little bruising. Some suffering. And I can imagine Jesus went through Genesis and Exodus and showed them of himself in these these scriptures i can imagine he stopped a little bit at deuteronomy chapter 18 and where moses said to the children of israel the lord your god will raise up for you a prophet like me among your own brothers you must listen to him this is a special prophet that's going to be raised up in the land that led to the expectation that the messiah would come as a prophet but moses went on to say this this prophet would be not like any other prophet Moses himself was a unique man of God but Moses saw a glimpse of the true prophet the ultimate prophet the one that would come to complete the work that he only started by types and shadows through the sacrificial system and so on 
all of that was just type and shadows and jesus probably took them through that and explained to them i can imagine he moved on to the prophets and brethren you know that there are many prophecies that speak of jesus christ i understand that there are about 300 prophecies in the old testament that refer to the coming of jesus christ despite all those prophetic messages people missed the time of god's appointment when his son would come into the world because they didn't understand the revelation of the word of god many of us read scripture you know but we don't understand we have to ask god for revelation that we would understand his word in isaiah 9 verse 6 every jew knew this passage but they didn't understand what it was referring to it says for unto us a child is born to us a son is given the government shall be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end he will reign on david's throne and over his kingdom and establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever the zeal of the lord almighty will accomplish this these were the prophetic words that they didn't understand i want you to turn to isaiah 53 with me and just get a glimpse with me of the prophetic revelation of jesus isaiah himself i don't think understood what he was talking about he only had a little glimpse he didn't understand the fullness and jesus had to reveal to these disciples the full meaning of this scripture isaiah 53 i want us to look at it together and to see jesus the suffering servant being spoken about we're going to look at a few other old testament scriptures but what i want us to understand is that jesus is revealed to us in these scriptures let the holy spirit reveal jesus as we read these scriptures isaiah 53 verse 1 who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to himself nothing in his appearance that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering how many of us here are glad that jesus was familiar with suffering you know when we suffer we have a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity he knows how we feel because he is familiar with suffering like one from whom men hide their faces he was despised and we esteemed him not you see the jews knew these scriptures but they didn't understand they didn't want to accept that the messiah would have to suffer they didn't want to accept that the messiah would actually go through this grief this rejection and so they, they thought there must be some other explanation to these scriptures there must be some other way and you know brethren many of us we don't understand that to enter into glory we have to go through hardship and suffering it is god's way and so when you get going through hardship in this life don't be discouraged because the glory is coming turn to your neighbor and say the glory is on the way that's why you're suffering so much the glory is on the way God uses suffering to bring us into his presence. And I'm not talking about just sickness. or I'm talking about any form of suffering. I'm talking about not having your financial needs met. I'm talking about not having the wife that you, 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 you think you need. Or the husband that you want. I'm talking about struggling with, with your bills. I'm talking about wanting a better job. And you can't get the better job and you have to stay where you're there you understand talking about those things those things are hardships but if we respond right to them god will turn them around and bring us into glory and that's the message that we need to embrace and that's the message that's why i'm glad that we don't have a wishy-washy pretty pretty jesus who never experienced any hardship 
he was god who came down and dwelt among us experienced what we experienced he had to go through what we go through and he overcame and he's now set set down at the right hand of the glory of god amen, amen. give the lord a praise for his goodness i'm so glad that jesus wasn't detached and immune from pain he experienced it he went through all of this but he didn't do it just so that he could have the experience of what it meant to suffer and to experience pain he did it to redeem us from sin verse 4 says surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows yet we considered him stricken by god smitten by him and afflicted he was pierced for what he was crushed for what the punishment that brought us peace was upon him so his redemption is so that we can come into salvation and i'm so glad that the salvation that we can come into is not only in heaven but we can experience a foretaste of it here and now it is true that in this life we will not be totally free from all pain and suffering until jesus comes but it is also true that we can experience a foretaste of his glory here and now in our lives amen we can experience a taste of the power of the age to come and that's what we rejoice in the glory of god the foretaste and sometimes the foretaste is so sweet you wonder what else could come that is sweeter than this but the foretaste is just the appetizer and when you worship in the lord have you ever been worshiping the lord and you experience like the glory of god you feel that glory is just coming down into your soul and you feel the presence of god that's just a foretaste brethren that's just the appetizer that's not the real thing although you shout and you say amen and you enjoy the presence of god and you think boy nothing could be greater than this that is just a little tip and that's what god wants us to come into physical healing is only a foretaste of the full healing and deliverance that we are going to experience his provision here and now is only a foretaste of the full provision that we are going to experience when he's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes Aren't you glad for that hope that we have? The resurrection is a foretaste. It is like the first fruits. And the fact that Jesus is risen shows that we are going to be raised incorruptible as well. It says, by his wounds, we are healed. Verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit found in his mouth, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the, though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Hallelujah. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities therefore i will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for their transgressions jesus that's what he accomplished and i can imagine these disciples along the path hearing jesus expound these words and the light being turned on and they're getting the revelation 
Later on, they said, did not our hearts burn within us? You see, brethren, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to come into the understanding and the revelation of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. We can read the words, but to understand our heart, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to minister to our hearts and give us that revelation. The revelation that we saw in other books in the psalm psalm 22 you can read it about the suffering of jesus it is a graphic description of jesus on the cross the psalmist was caught up in the revelation of the spirit and saw jesus on the cross and described the crucifixion in detail graphic detail in daniel chapter 7 daniel saw revelation of the son of man and his coming into authority and taking the kingdom from the kingdoms of this world and having established the kingdom of god in the world today in psalm 16 the psalmist saw the resurrection and said therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices my body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the grave nor will you let your holy one see decay that was a prophecy of jesus christ and over and over jesus showed them from different scriptures revelations of himself the scripture says that their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. The scripture says that Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. We need to ask Jesus to reveal himself to us. He might be walking with you along the road, but you're not recognizing him. You might be hearing his, the sound of his voice right now. But you're not recognizing him you might feel that stirring in your heart that god is speaking but you're not recognizing him in his fullness jesus wants to reveal himself to you luke chapter 24 after jesus revealed himself to these disciples all of a sudden they changed direction they regained their focus and they head back to jerusalem by the time they reached jerusalem they discovered that jesus had appeared to peter and to the disciples and then jesus appeared to all of them together and in verse 44 jesus said to them this is what i told you while i was with you everything must be fulfilled as it is written about me in the law of moses in the prophets and in the psalms that's the whole of the old testament you know brethren the old testament was divided into three areas the law of moses that's the first five books the prophets and the psalms which are the writings and it says that he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures verse 45 and he told them this is what is written christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at jerusalem you can find jesus in all the scriptures every section of the scripture Jesus wants us to come into an understanding of himself in the word of God. We are not being asked by him to believe a creed or a philosophy. We are asked to come into a revelation. We must encounter Jesus personally. If we don't, the facts of the resurrection mean nothing. The fact that it is historical and that is attested to by a lot of evidence don't mean nothing you have to come into an understanding of jesus a revelation of jesus amen how do we recognize jesus he will reveal himself through scripture but not scripture alone by his spirit he will bring us into fellowship with himself and sometimes the fellowship is with each other around the word of god and jesus reveals himself to us i believe we should all be having a sense of expectancy that god would indeed speak to us and be opening our hearts to him actually speaking to us and revealing himself we want to recognize jesus let's make time for jesus to reveal himself to us i want to ask you the question have you encountered jesus for yourself personally i want to ask that question have you seen him in scripture do you understand spiritually what he has done for you 
And do you recognize that you have to receive him into your heart and let him be Lord of your own life? I want us to pray at this time. Bow your heads and let us pray. Perhaps as you heard the word, you began to understand that Jesus has been speaking to you. In the midst of what you considered a hopeless situation, Jesus Christ has come beside you along your path and you said, look, this is the meaning this is the revelation believe me have faith in me i will turn your life around i'll give you a new direction and new hope is there anyone here in our midst who is encountering things in your life where you feel hopeless you feel disillusioned you even feel depressed i want to see your hand i want to pray for you this morning i see those hands Anybody else? Yes, you can put them down. Anybody else? I want to let you know that the Holy Spirit is here speaking to you. And he's trying to break through to you. Not with information and knowledge, but with the revelation of Jesus. Jesus himself wants to reveal himself to you. I'm going to pray for those people who raise their hands. Is there anyone here who would also recognize at this time that you need to accept jesus christ as your lord and savior you know that he's the one who is spoken of in the prophets in all the scriptures and you want to give your life to him you're not a christian or maybe you are a backslider and you want to recommit your life to jesus or you want to accept jesus as your lord and savior and you want him to be real in your life you want to come into your heart and transform your life is there one person here like that just raise your hand